Blog Talk Radio. Hello out there, everybody. It is Tuesday, April 17th, 2012. I am David Demzowski, founder of the Financial Bin and host of Financial Bin Radio. Now, as always, before I introduce you to our guest today, let me share a few quick notes. First off, don't forget to pick up your copy of Entrepreneur Intervention. Come on. I've been talking about this for months. Entrepreneur Intervention, Triumphs and Failures of Entrepreneurs. It's our first book, released in November 2011. You, all you got to do, go to financialbin.com, click on the book section at the very top, next to the login button for more information. There you'll find that you can just pick up your copy for your e-reader for Kindle, Nook, iPad, and others, just 99 cents. You can get a paperback copy for just under $10 at Amazon and CreateSpace. Why have you done that yet? That's all I got. That's all I got to say about that. Now, secondly, we're in the editing and formatting process for Landlord Intervention. Now, I've talked about this for a little while as well. This is a book, and we're going to be we're going to be releasing this in in late May of 2012, possibly early June. This is a book by a gentleman who has been in the real estate rental business for over 20 years, and he gives you a fantastic step by step how-to guide for you to begin your own career as a landlord. It's a great resource. I've been through it a few times myself as the editor, and uh, I think you're really going to enjoy it. Uh, we're wrapping up, and we're wrapping up the editing process, and we should have a cover done soon, and sure enough, it'll, it'll, be, in your hands at, it'll be in your hands in a matter of weeks. Now, finally, we're also still collecting submissions for wealth intervention. We're probably going to be pushing this back a little bit, guys. Um, you know, we plan to release this probably – uh, probably later this year. I'm thinking maybe at the fall at this point. And that will be the third installment of the Intervention Series. <clears throat> now, excuse me. Now, our, our, our guest tonight is Lee Rosner. Lee is the creator of Money Slinger, which is a non-traditional money management solution which nearly eliminates the need for budgeting calculations. And we're waiting for Lee to join us right now. He should be he should be calling in the line in a couple of minutes here. But if you head over to moneyslinger.com, you'll see that he is actually I believe he is in beta right now. We'll get we'll confirm that uh, with Lee momentarily. Uh, he's in beta right now, but it's it, look it's a really great program. Uh, it's gotten some great reviews. Uh, Lee told me recently that he uh, he's he's actually been approached by CNBC about this in a, for an article that's going to be running in a, a, a probably in a couple of weeks, and uh, I'll make sure to tweet that to all you guys at, at, you know, on our on our Twitter account at Financial Ben. Please make sure to follow us there. Now, <clears throat> what we'll be asking Lee tonight, we're gonna we're gonna have him take us through you know his career before creating Money Slinger. And then maybe get into you know why he decided to go this route. What is so non-traditional about Money Slinger in, in, in general as well? And you know we also want to know you know what sets Money Slinger apart from the other programs that are out there right now. You know it, how is Money Slinger different from Mint.com? And you know we'll also kind of get into some of the. He's also a blogger. He 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 writes at a at a blog on Money Slinger. Make sure to check that out as well. You can, all you got to do is click on the top there. Uh, there's a there's a blog link, and you know he so he kind of talks about different ways to, um, you know, budgeting and living within your what he calls not your means your mean because the the way money slinger works it's kind of it kind of focuses on your, your the average of your uh, of all of your expenses so again we'll we'll get Lee to elaborate on that in a little bit as well, and he'll give us some tips for Generation Y because we're always in need of that we're always in need of, um, you know, somebody from it with a different perspective. To kind of give us a little uh, a rundown of what they think and and, and how can how they can help us. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we're still we're still waiting for Lee to join us here. Now, if you head over to financialbin.com, I want to kind of take you through what our what our top story of the day is. It's rebuilding your credit through responsible spending, and this is the this is the top story on financialbin.com, and it is by Martha Jackson. Martha has um has contributed a few articles for us recently. And she's she's really doing a great job. Uh, this is definitely an article worth checking out. Uh, you know, a couple of the ways that she says is the, a way to kind of rebuild your credit is number one, lay off all the credit cards. You know, I mean, sometimes you'll, you know, in, in a joking manner, but but you know, I mean, you know, with the way people, even though student loan debt has had kind of surpassed credit card debt, it's still not a joke when somebody whips out like for fifteen or fourteen credit cards. I mean, that's just ridiculous. So knock it off with the credit cards, people. Especially Generation Y, we're 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 a very big culprit in that. <clears throat> Two, make a make a monthly budget. You know, there's nothing there's nothing wrong with sitting down and kind of breaking down, uh, you know, what your monthly spending is, and, and and even doing it by even doing it daily. Some people need that. Some people need to see, uh, you, you know, um, 
I mean, you need to see it spelled out for them in, in you know, step by step and every, down to the penny, everything that, everything that they need to spend in a day. And, you know, also consolidate your debt. Uh, you know, she gives, she gives examples like, you know, consolidation options, options include your credit card balance transfer, uh, home equity loan, debt settlement. Uh, some people even do it with student loans as well. Um, okay, and I think we have Lee on the line now. And Lee, welcome to Financial Bin Radio. Hey, David. How you doing? Oh, I'm, do- I'm doing great. How about yourself? Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. All right, Lee. Well, the first question I have for you is uh, I-, I already gave you a little uh, a little introduction prior to you calling in. Um, so the okay. first question I have is can you can you walk us through your career leading up to creating Money Slinger? Well, uh, career is uh, not in the financial industry, of course. It's in graphic design, uh, print, and web development. Years ago, we're going back to oh, about 1988 or so. Uh, so really, it's outside that f- the financial field, uh, mostly okay. in design. But well, what, what, kind, what kind of things did you do? I mean, what, what were some of the projects that you worked on, some of the companies that you worked for? Well, uh, toward the end there, around 1988, was W.R. Grace and Company out in Lake Zurich, Illinois. Uh, managed an implant uh, print department, design and print department. Had about four or five employees there. Was there about 10 years. And uh, that's about the time we came up with what's now called Money Slingers around then. Um, we had to... Uh, uh, getting into you know personal budgeting issues and trying to figure out cash flow and things like that and uh, picked up some tips on some products that uh, Grace Dearborn is actually developing. Believe it or not, that has to do with uh, wow. statistical analysis and working with numbers. Mm-hmm. So I learned a little bit there. So you know, so you said you, 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 you're not from a you don't really have a financial background per se. So what led you led you to create creating the B word? I think is what it was. Money Slinger was originally called, correct? Yes, yes. So what what, and, made, what led you to create that? Well, it wasn't intentional, so to say. I wasn't out to mm-hmm. create anything, necessarily. Okay. Uh, my wife was, uh, uh, was raising kids. She was not working, and I was working, of course. We bought a house at the time, and we were fixing up the house to resell it. At the t- same time, we had a full-time job, and Karen, my wife, was you know pretty much responsible for handling the bills and so on. And, uh, you know, she got stuck sometimes into cash flow and it wasn't right, didn't have the money at the right time, and this is due, and you know, even if it was $35, I mean, we hardly had any bills back then, of course. Um, but it got to the point where, you know, one time I'm hammering on a wall in a room and I hear her screaming in the kitchen, you know, I can't take it anymore, and crying, and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> not that we didn't have the money, we just didn't have the money right now, or right then, right. you know, to pay something. So, um, you know, and I see this now as I look back, my, um, you know, my part in the marriage is problem solving. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, know, I, go, I, okay, know, I know how you but, feel. Yeah, exactly. we got a problem over here. i got to take care of it so I can go back and do my, my work, you know. So uh, I, that's how I started getting involved in it. I sat down. What's the issue? You know, we'd solve it and we'd work it out and spend a couple hours, get everything set. It'd be fine for, you know, two weeks, three weeks, a month. You know, six weeks, all of a sudden it started becoming a knot again, you know, a mess. And right. figured it out. And I thought, once and for all, i got to figure this out once and for all. This is like meaningless, menial stuff. You know, I think right. we only had, who knows, 10 bills back then. You know, I said, this should not be that hard. You know, <laughs> you know so I thought, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get serious about this. I'm going to figure this out, you know. So I went to the library and you you're, you look up all the budget books, how to do this, how to do that. And. I read those and tried this, tried that, and uh, it was a lot of work, of course, even doing all this. And this is almost as much work as me not doing anything and just figure it out at a later time, you know, every right. <laughs> every six weeks or something. So uh, that's when I I started realizing or seeing patterns, okay? And I realized that no matter how well – you sat down and you organized your finances and you worked out all you worked it all out and now you you're pretty much out you know you're covered for two weeks let's say you know you think you got everything covered you come back two weeks later or whatever and you realize it's a mess again okay and it's time to to figure it all out for the next two weeks okay but i realized that every time i came back to figure it out it was 
a new mess. It was never the same mess, if you mm-hmm. if you understand me. The, no, the sure. timelines, you know, the money, the cash flow, when it's coming in, when it's going out, every time was different. And that's what I, it, sort of, it sort of struck me. No matter what I do, no matter how organized I get, no matter how well I get, I nail this down right now, when I come back, it's going to be a totally new mess to clean up. Right. So that's when I decided to really get serious about it and try to figure out how can I make it so that every time I sit down, it's the same mess. <laughs> so that means that whatever I figure out the time before, I can at least use use it the next time. You right. know what I mean? Uh, so that's when I came up with averaging and uh, figuring out, I uh, figured out that variability was the problem in money management. That's the key word is variability. Okay, so, so, so tell us about Money Slinger. How, how, did, how does Money Slinger work? Money Slinger works by uh, eliminating variability. And what that means is uh, managing and controlling your cash flow, okay, your actual physical okay. cash flow, money moving in, money moving out, mm-hmm. controlling that before you actually try to manage your money, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, because traditional systems pretty much – don't even bother with cash flow. I mean, if you realize you have all the banks and your your car payment, you got your different uh, utilities, you got everybody making demands on you. They set in their their own dates, their own figures. Maybe right. you spent, depending on what you spent the month before, you owe this much this month. So you have all these demands being put on you. And no one knows. Or they're all individual demands. Nothing's coordinated. Okay, and mm-hmm. traditional systems just have you put up with that. You accept that and you basically just have to stay on top of it. You log in your bank every week and you just figure it out and you go for the best and figure it out again next week. Um, what Money Slinger does is it, instead of um, how would you say this? It uses running averages. Okay, Instead of looking at a mm-hmm. month at expenses <clears throat> month per month, and you go through a month, you figure it all out, and now you start over again at the next month, and you work through the month, and you figure it all out, and you start again from zero. Right. Called zero-based bu- budgeting. This uh, money slinger uses averages, and it, what that means is it looks at all your expenses for the year, for everything, mm-hmm. and it divides by twelve, and it divides by two again. So it's every half month, semi-monthly. Okay. okay. So it averages all your expenses for the year down to a fixed semi-monthly figure, or a few figures, actually, but they're the same figure right. um, every half month. So, so and uh, yeah, how, no, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, uh, continue, please. Well, how that works, you know, that's only part, I mean, that that's the theory. Now, how do you put it into practice? Well, what you do is, if you if you know what your average spend is going to be, let's take a Mm, let's say an unfixed payment. A uh, car payment's fixed every month. Let's take uh, your heating bill for your house. Okay, sure. It may be you know whatever seventy dollars one month and one hundred and twenty dollars the next month. What it does, you add that heating bill up uh, for the entire year, divide by twelve, you get a monthly average cost. Okay, let's just stick with the average monthly for ease of explanation. Now, if you have a physical bank account dedicated just to that particular expense. And let's say your average spend to make it easy again is a hundred bucks a month on average. Sometimes it's eighty, sometimes it's one hundred and twenty dollars a month. On average, you're spending a hundred dollars a month. If you could, if you deposit every month a hundred dollars into that fixed account, mm-hmm. and then pay out of that account through the year the actual bill. Whether it's eighty-two dollars and thirty-six cents, or ninety-seven dollars and twenty-eight cents, or one hundred and ten dollars right, right. and thirty-eight cents—all those complicated figures with all of this change. Okay, <laughs> paying that out, right? You're paying that out, but all you got to remember, and all you got to do, is pay a fixed hundred dollars. Okay, so you don't even have to worry about the all the variables, uh, variable costs every month with all of this change. And of course, you wonder, well, gee, how do I know I'm averaging? Well, that's what Money Slinger does for you. It... So, so how would you how would you say Money Slinger sets Money Slinger sets itself apart from other programs like Mint.com, for instance? Well, Mint.com or uh, traditional systems don't even get into averaging whatsoever. Right. 
Right. I mean, they, they don't control cash flow whatsoever. Cash flow is this assumed to be fixed, and you're just going to deal with it. And you deal with it as often as you need to deal with it to stay on top of it. So money's Lee, linear, again, works on averages. Lee, what, what kind of user feedback and, and media coverage have you, have you received from all this? Well, I got good feedback, good testimonials online for people who, you know, take the time to understand it. it right. May, it's a... It's not that it's complicated. It's just that it's different in its and yeah, how it's absolutely. you know how you think about it, how, how right. you think about cash flow. So um, I haven't been promoting it too much because we're just coming out of pub, public beta right now. So I want to make sure the system's solid. It's been doing really good. But um, yeah, right now I'm just about ready to start promoting it at this point. So w- when do you think you'll officially be coming out of uh, public beta? Mm, could be in the next week or two here, actually. Oh. Fantastic. Well, yeah. you know, I'd love for you to keep keep me up to date on that. I'll make sure to uh, tweet that around and email that around to my uh, to my followers. Um, sure. I guess my my next question would would, would be, Lee. Uh, you know, when I was doing some research on Money Slinger and 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 you, you know, I saw your December twentieth, uh, twenty eleven blog post where you where you kind of talked about personal budgeting and living beyond your your mean, quote unquote. Could you kind of walk us through what your message is with that article? Uh, that's the power of averages, and, and mm-hmm. again, it's averages is amazing, and I'm surprised it's not used more in, in finance. Um, there's, uh, for instance, um, again, relating to that article, if you take two sets of numbers, uh, one set has 10 numbers in it, another set has 10 numbers in it, and the first set has 10 different numbers in it, 5, 27, 30, 46, whatever numbers, 10 of them, all different. You take the second set of numbers, again, all different than the first set of numbers. You look at that, it looks like two different sets of numbers. Okay. Uh, Using averages, if you total that up, total those numbers and divide by 10, the amount of figures there are in that set, you can find an average. And you realize that you can that both sets of numbers might have the exact same average figure. So what you're doing is averages allow you to see through variability, to see through all that random chaos that most people have to deal with, the financial chaos that most people have to deal with, that just the magic, simple magic averages are amazing so that all the variability that most people are dealing with um, that you really can't see through. The only way the only way to deal with it is what, is to add, subtract, and make sure you got enough left to you know cover you. The variability itself is just dealt with. Uh, if you're using averages, all that variability, the financial variability in your life, uh, you can see through. And and I don't know if, if you read uh, anything about you know. First, let me give you some another example of variability, if I could. Please. It's Please. not so much you know cash amounts are uh, being variable. It's it's time we have we're working on two three different timelines you get cash flow coming in that's usually on a uh, a week a week or bi-weekly right uh, schedule seven or 14 days mm-hmm. and then usually expenses are due on a monthly schedule okay and it's not even every 30 days because the months change you got 30 31 days occasionally there's a 29 thrown in there um, those two schedules are perpetually um, what would you call it? Uh, it competing with each other. There's no mm-hmm. rhythm. Yeah, oh, yeah. For, for instance, you know, for instance, you get if you get uh, you get paid at the beginning of January, your car payment is due seven days out. You get paid at the beginning of February, your car payment's due three days out. <laughs> you get you get paid at the beginning of March, and all of a sudden, your car payment was yesterday. Okay, now, <laughs> right, now that's, right. just, that's just one one payment. Okay, one income and, and one payment. Now imagine having your figures on the, that timeline be different, a different income each time, unless you had a variable payment also on top, you know, uh, mixed in with that that uh, that time those time frames. Right. So imagine now, imagine that times you know who knows ten, twenty different random expenses. And you realize that no matter where you set yourself down in the month, that it's always going to be different. It's just a mess. It's just the way the system is. So if you can undo that, untie that, so that everything is in sync, which is what Money Singer does, it sets you up in a semi-monthly 
time frame, you pay yourself on the 1st and the 15th, and you pay out everybody else on the 1st and 15th. Right. And the same figures each time. It's, it's, Wait, what, it's memorable. What what has uh, approaching your you know your cash flow your payment schedule this way? What has it done for you? I mean, you're you're the guy you're you're the brains behind all this. What has it done for you, kind of approaching your finances this way? Well, um, here's what it did for us. 1988, I figured this out. I didn't know I figured it out in 1988. I had two kids. We were raising. We had two kids. We were raising. Once we figured it out, I don't even know what I did. I figured this thing out around 1988, and then life went on. Life got busy, right? We went on. It wasn't until 15 years later, okay, that I realized what I had done because I didn't call this thing anything. I wasn't trying to sell it. I wasn't packaging it. It was invisible. It was behind in the background of our lives. Right. How I came across it again was 15 years later, now this is again 88, so 15 years computers, and all of a sudden we had a nice computer around whatever that was. Um, because the whole time all those, those 15 years, I thought I was ignoring my finances, mm-hmm. okay, because I really wasn't doing anything with my finances. Right. Now, keep in mind, we were at around an 820 FICO score during this time, okay? Oh, wow. We weren't even trying. I mean, we didn't even know what we were doing. I mean, literally, we'd be watching <laughs> Oprah with all people crying, all the people on the kitchen tables crying, and we'd be yeah. sitting there reading the paper, look at Oprah going, oh, man, we are going to be in trouble. You know, we really got to, we really got to get our... We should be crying. <laughs> We're not doing anything. We're going to wake up one day. We are going to be in trouble, you know. Well, again, we got a computer. We thought, oh, cool, let's get some financial software. It's about time we get into this. We really should right. master this. So I bought. I forgot what I bought, but I installed it, sat there for four hours, fixing it up, getting it ready, and I realized that no matter what I do to this thing, no matter how well I maintained it, it's going to take a lot of maintenance. Absolutely. Keeping all these numbers right, right? That right. it wasn't even going to get me close to what we were doing, whatever we were doing. And I didn't know what we were doing. So I, I, this this happened a little bit, you know, over the years, but I always ignored it and brushed it off, okay? Mm-hmm. But this time I sat there, you know, who knows it was, third, fourth, fifth, sixth time, and I pushed myself back from the desk and go, I got to figure out what the <laughs> hell we've been doing for 15 years because this <laughs> is nonsense, you know, and we must be doing something right because we can, you know, keep an 820 FICO score. So I had to, I literally, I had to go back and re-engineer. I had to undo, try to figure out what I was doing, which I did. I figured it out, and that's when I thought, you know, other people have asked me about it, friends and stuff, and I give them my little spreadsheets and, and stuff, but I thought, you know, people, this is different. You know, people can use this. So that's why I, I started packaging it up. And it was 2002. I did a, a Windows version called the B Word and was selling that around 2002. And then just lately got into Money Slinger, which is more of a f- full, mature version of the process. So so it, it was interesting. It was Well, here's the, the point to, to your question is what it does for people. It makes money management invisible. Now, I know that sounds kind of, yeah, right. <laughs> but, you know, you understand because people are dealing with money management a certain way and they realize that it's never going to go away. But right. using money slinger, using averages, again, the magic of averages, because you don't just average everything out. When you After you start averaging all your individual expenses, you combine them into three groups, okay? And you only have, basically, money slinger, you have three expenses, you don't have 15 or 20 expenses. You have three expenses. There's your fixed expenses, your flexible expenses, and your savings. And the reason you average and combine or consolidate is because you use the variability of one expense against the variability of another. And what that means is that while you keep, if you total and average two expenses together to become one, mm-hmm. and you, de- you determine that average figure, that you deposit into a dedicated account, let's call it a hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. If 
if these two expenses fluctuate, one might go to 105, and the other expense will go to 95. Okay, and through the year, these expenses fluctuate up and down against each other, and you're using that variability against itself within the account. So all you have to do is, is deposit your hundred bucks, let's say, and let all let your bank account absorb all this variability. Now you, you you build up on that, and instead of just using two expenses, again you group. Like we have probably twenty expenses, fifteen twenty in blue or fixed mm-hmm. expenses. We total that into one expense. We have one deposit we make into a blue account or one dedicated bank account called the blue account that covers all our fixed expenses. Of course, you can't do it once a month. Money Slinger divides all your monthly expenses in half, so it's the first and the 15th. So you deposit the first half on the first and the second half, 15, against the exact same amount Okay, each time. Of course, you might pay out you know, your your expenses would be split into two, group, two groups. What's owed by due date, the first half of the month, you pay out on the first. And the second group, whatever is due the second half of the month, you pay out on the 15th. But when you get to a point when you use money, you realize you don't really care about the payouts or the, the amounts or the loose change. You're just writing checks. I mean, you could be watching TV writing checks because you know that you've deposited enough money to cover all your expenses. So you're pretty much prepaying all your expenses with one number. Lee, is, is there any, uh, are you thinking about maybe turning this into a, a, an application, maybe for you know iPhone or, or Droid or something like that? Yes, because people have been asking a little bit about that. Um, the objective be, behind Money Singer is to, when you do your expenses on the first, um, mm. Everything's taken care of. You pretty much are financially set until the 15th. Okay, either red account, which is the flexible account, you don't even track your expenses. You Anything that's flexible that you don't want to track, you make your deposit into the red account, flexible account, and you. the only thing you have to track is you don't spend more than what you deposited until you meet your next, you know, let's say the 15th, when you make your next deposit. So you're, you're throttling your spending based on the balance in the account. Okay. And what's nice about that is you got all these other people tracking how much you buy for coffee and how much, you know, I can only have one cup today. Oh, I had my cup today. I can't get another cup. And <laughs> but trying to restrict themselves to those, you know, trying to track. I got their mobile phone and they're tracking. Oh, I spent a dollar seventy here and this is this goes into category see which category I got forty seven categories here. This is automotive. You don't do any of that with Money Singer. Anything you want to track you put in blue. But your everyday living expenses, the loose variable stuff you keep in red. It's flexible. And what that allows you to do is you if you want to go out and eat ten times the first half of the month, whatever money's left is what you get to spend on other things. So you have total flexibility in what you spend on them. Buy 10 cups of coffee that day. It doesn't matter. You subtract right. your balance. you got X amount left. You get up to the 15th, which is five days away. And that pretty much throttles your decision-making and your spending just based on the balance of the account. So back to your question about the mobile, some people, and it, I can see where we need this, especially when there's two people spending out of the same account. Mm. Okay. One might have a checkbook with them and writing and keeping a balance, but another person doesn't, let's say. And maybe they're using a debit card. They don't know what the balance, the current balance is in the account versus the other person that has a checkbook. So, yeah, there will be a mobile app coming out to manage the red account, flexible account, so that uh, multiple people can see a real-time balance in the account. All right, Lee, we, we got a, we got about a minute left here. Uh, really quick, can you can you tell the mm-hmm. listeners where they can get in contact with you and learn more about Money Slinger? Sure, uh, go to moneyslinger.com, dot com, of course. Uh, most of uh, the explanation is there. Um, I would say give it some time to soak in and kind of understand uh, the concepts. Uh, hopefully, I can do some more videos coming up here shortly. Um, but if you if you do get in, just create a free thirty day account. You can sign up for free. Try it for 30 days. Um, but if you get into it and you practice a little bit, you'll notice that uh, Money Slinger will work your entire money management uh, efforts and tasks down to one calculation. 
on the incoming All right, Lee, I'm sorry to cut you off. I, we got about a couple of seconds left. I want to thank you for joining us tonight, everybody. Uh, this is David Domzowski signing off, financialbed.com. Thank you.